So there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. And yes, I wanted to um, do a video on black power. Do we really have any? And the reason why I thought about it was because somebody, as usual, sent me a video and I thought I would share that video with you and then kind of give my opinion on it. Um, Yes, so let me first do that. If it's the first time in passing, thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Subscribe, share, interact with fellow subscribers. Um, like I said, what I tend to do is I find all different kind of topics that I think might be of interest and I give my two pets worth. It's just my opinion, nothing concrete, no facts. So, um, and in some, and in some instances, I do give factual information but I will support it with um, the source of where I got it from. Anyway today we're talking about do black people have power and I thought I would share this video with you so let's see what you think. A people without their knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without its roots. As you can see you see this tree has been disconnected from its roots and it has died because it's no longer connected. As you can see this tree, they are standing strong and tall because they are connected to their roots. We have been disconnected. And as a people, we have to reconnect. Now, we are natural spiritual beings by nature. We have always been a spiritual people. Remember, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are spiritual first before we are physical. Everything that has happened to us has been done deliberately to us to keep us shut down. Slavery have done a number on our people, especially their spirit and their mind. It has completely snatched us away from who we are as a whole. And we have to get back to our roots. They gave you religion so that way you won't look within. You'll be too busy worshiping some God where you should be acknowledging your ancestors because that's where your source, that's where your power come from. This they knew. That's why we couldn't read books back then. That's why if they caught us meditating or doing anything spiritual at that time, they were chopping us off at the head because they know how powerful we are when we are back connected to our source, our roots, which is our ancestors. We stopped acknowledging them. Oh, we don't worship the dead. They ain't dead. They're just not in this physical form. But you would rather worship these gods that they give y'all in religion that's dead. But you don't worship someone dead. Okay. But you don't acknowledge your ancestors. They intentionally demonize it. So that way you don't know who you are. Because when you know who you are, you are powerful. The thing is this. Trust your ancestors. Yes, so that was the um, inspiration behind the video. I just need to find one other one that kind of made me think about this even more um let's see if i can find it now might not be able to find it okay i'm showing you this one because um it's showing you how um jamaicans this is in jamaica Jamaicans in the Caribbean go into tongues and how they believe in their power. They believe in the power of God and they believe that when God tells them to do something, they are instructed to do that and God gives them this power. So look at this one now. The Ministry of Education is investigating an incident at the Oberlin High School today where dozens of students appear to be disoriented following a religious exercise. Classes at the institution ended early. Anthony Love now reports on how it all unfolded. 
it all began during General Assembly in the schoolyard after a teacher was given the opportunity to share a word and pray for the students. This woman says her grandchildren attend the institution. And when I reach at the school, I see a, a, a good amount of children at the ground, some inside the school, some into the staff room, some outside, some at the gate, some at the sidewalk. It's still not clear what caused the chaos at the institution. However, in a letter addressed to the acting regional director in the education ministry, the school's acting principal, Anton and Grace, said, During the session, some students were overpowered by the anointing and started to worship aloud as well, while a few others had to be taken to the nurse because they could not control themselves and a few had also fainted. But not all persons see it that way. Iselin Black, a member of the Greater Works Apostolic Church, recounted a female student seeking divine intervention being brought to the church. When she was coming on the step, the, the power of God moved. And we start to move under the anointing of Almighty God. And the Spirit of God tell me to do something, and I did it. When she fell, the Spirit tell me to tell them to put some olive oil in her mouth. She wouldn't open her mouth. She wouldn't open her mouth for it to go in there after I do what the Spirit said to do first. And the Spirit tell me something again. And said, do that. Echo Shanda. And I just get the water like how the Spirit said. The Spirit said, the demon is in her eye and it's looking at the people. And the Spirit said, throw the water in her eye. I've been throw the water in her eye. And she open her mouth same time and then put Makosha. Hallelujah. And she open her mouth same time. And she spit out back the olive oil after I go down her throat. She explains that after their intervention, the student revived. Meanwhile, Wednesday's bizarre incident at Oberlin has left parents and teachers worried with some question. Okay, so. So the first video um, is talking about our ancestors and how we have lost touch with our ancestors and that it's our ancestors who are able to give us the power. And then you see that lady, she's um, from a church, she speaks in tongues, she claims to have um, messages from the spirit that instruct her to put olive oil into the child's mouth because the child wouldn't open her mouth. The spirit said to her, throw water in her eyes. So when she throwed, splashed the water in her eyes, the girl must have spluttered, opened up her mouth, and she was able to put the olive oil in her mouth, and she was revived. Now, is that power? Is that power that we as black people have? When they're speaking in tongues, where does that come from? I heard once that if somebody speaks in tongues and there's not somebody in the church to interpret it, those, tongue, those tongues are not from God. I don't know how true that is. But I have been in churches where somebody speaks in tongues and then um, a few minutes later you hear somebody on the other side of the room interpreting the tongues. And that is supposed to be um, genuine genuine spirit-filled people but I don't know anything about that so um, once again um, when you think that um, obia which is like voodoo that kind of stuff was criminalized it was um, suppressed because um, white people or slave owners I should say were afraid that black people with this power would turn on them so they criminalized it and anybody found practicing practicing it would either be flogged would either be um, sentenced to death or put in jail or whatever the consequences of practicing obia or voodoo were really really severe so it makes you wonder did they actually believe that, that the slaves were able or had the power to do supernatural things? 
And if so, do do black people still have it? And if so, do they even want to use it? I mean, it has been outlawed in um, Jamaica and a lot of the Caribbean countries, Obia. Um, I think the fines are not so excessive now. I think there was some kind of appeal because they reckoned it was our ancestral rights. Why we, um, why we are able, or some people are able, to practice obia, and then when you think about, you know, I put I put that about the school because when you think about Oberlin School, obia, somebody said um, Oberlin School. You have to wonder if that was the power of God or the power of the devil or the demon. You've got some people saying it's demon work. Some people say it's God work. But we don't know, like I said. Um, So the current law was made to symbolise Jamaica's hostility to its African connections and to suppress poor people's religion. So there was something about it why it was suppressed, why it was banned. And on the one hand, you can say, well, you know, when you think about Obi, you think about um, chickens with blood on it and they're left outside people's doors, um, men hanging from trees. I heard about the golden calf. So when you think about Obi, you think about harm, you think about the bad things it does. But apparently it also has a healing quality. It also replaces doctors. And there's also obia men and women who can who actually can heal people. I don't know how they do it, but apparently so. So I guess it all depends whether you're using your power for good or you're using it for evil. It's just like people who have talents. People who have talents you can if you if you have if you're really good at aiming. You can use that to aim and um, do something constructive like um, playing darts or you can use it and aim and use a gun. It's, it's a bit like having talents and using them for good or evil. So it's the same thing with this obia thing. Um, how is it being used? Is there any validity in obia? Is there any validity in the power of the ancestors, in connecting with the ancestors? Is there any sorry about that? Is there any um, validity in that? Um, they, you know, I was reading one of the um, a preface in a book about about it. Um, and it wasn't really about obia. They were calling it spiritual rituals. And it was about voodoo, it was about obia, and it was about um, other kind of practices. And they were saying that there was drumming, and the drumming is quite hypnotic. There's dancing and there's singing. And in unison, all three of them in unison can create some kind of magical thing to happen. Now, what I'm wondering now is, okay, is it about unison? Is it about unified thought? Is it about being unified in spirit? Is it about um, having faith and praying? Because they say um, if more than one person prays together, it's going to bring about whatever it is that you want. So on the one hand, I'm thinking... Is the power in unification, in a unified body, in black people getting together, dancing, singing, having faith, praying, whatever it is? Or is it about, um, and that's why black people are being segregated, separated, um, they're dumbed down or They may, you know, they're distracted, um, all kind of things to make them, put them at ease. They're, you know, they aren't stable. Lots of different things that make them less than unified, inner fighting, black on black crime, as they call it, even though you have white on white crime and they don't call it that. So is it about, um, there's a body out there who knows 
that black people have the power to change things, whether it is through this talking in tongues or what happened in the Oberlin school. And so therefore, they don't want black people to be unified. That's why, you know, there's a breakdown in family, breakdown here, you know, there is no unity amongst black people, most black people. There's always this inner fighting, whether it's because you're light, whether it's because you're dark, whether it's because you're from one part of the Caribbean, whether it's because you're from Africa, tall, short, whatever it is. There always seems to be some issue going on. But it's sometimes it's those issues are kind of fed, so they become bigger than life, larger than life. So I'm not quite sure about that. Um... I think it's fascinating that a woman can talk in a school and it affects so many females. I mean, I think there were a couple of boys that were affected as well and they all fall to the floor. I mean, what kind of power is that? Where did that come from? So is there is there a supernatural power? Do we have a supernatural power? Does everyone, not just black people, have a supernatural power? That is the question. I don't have the answer. Um, I've heard about the rolling calf. I've heard about Duppy and things like that. Um, but like I said, you know, it was outlaw outlawed in the 1950s. And up until the 1950s, um, Jamaicans were regularly prosecuted under the Obia Act for all kinds of religious rituals. So practicing ancestral rites is a form of asserting group solidarity among friends, relatives and community at large. So it is about having a group. And that's what I'm thinking, you know, because, you know, when the police talk about groups, even if it's more than two people, they call it a gang. When God said, if two people ask for the same thing, it will be honoured. There's something about more than two people that makes a situation powerful. I'm not quite sure where it is, but I'm kind of um, just throwing things out there because it's quite interesting that the practising of ancestral rights is a form of of asserting group solidarity among friends, relatives, and community at large. I do hope I have got this source where I got it from. Sometimes I type it up and then I don't write it down, but hopefully I did. In church, one person will speak, I've already said that, and another person will translate. So do black people have special powers if they work in unison, one voice, one mind? They claim that older people are more attuned to the supernatural, probably because they're calmer, more susceptible to listening to their inner voice. I'm not sure. <coughs> um, like I said, over in high school, a woman said a few words. Next minute, this is a woman who gave the devotion. Next minute, most of the girls and a couple of boys were trembling, convulsing, breaking out in sweats. Got a cough. One woman said the Spirit of God told her to put the olive oil in her mouth. That's what I showed you. Then dashed water in her eye. When she dashed the water in her eye, the girl's mouth automatically opened and she poured olive oil in the mouth and eventually the girl calmed down. So was there really a spirit who spoke to that woman? If we are silent, will we all hear that silent voice, that inner voice that directs and instructs? Children are vulnerable portals an easy target for good and evil to enter. If we do have the power, would we use it for good or would we use it for evil? What spirit do the pastors avail themselves to? You see some of them touch his forehead and pff, they've gone back. I mean, what kind of power is that? Or is it contrived? Or is it real? Some people believe the needs and the powers of the dead. 
so they participate in rituals to avoid criticism and accusations of neglect from the living. So do we as black people really have supernatural powers that are being suppressed through fear, anxiety and instability? Because of the prohibition of African religious practicing, practices, African cults ended up combining different religions and different schools of thought with Makumba, Obanda and Kandobil. That's the Brazilian, Paraguay, Uruguay um, aspect of African, African um, traditions blended with um, Roman Catholic, Catholicism. And now it's coming out of the closet, apparently. The legacy of the African diaspora will always remain evident in the Caribbean regions and Latin America. Modern technology has brought people to each other's doorsteps, resulting in an enormous impact upon the change of exchange of ideas, experiences and knowledge for the future. So I guess the more we talk about this, the more we hear about it. I mean, I always thought Obia as a negative. I never knew that it could be a force for good. I always was told it was a force for evil. But there again, you know, as a child, you just listen to what people tell you, don't you? So, um, yeah, all I'm saying is, is that people in the church or people outside the church or people who do witchcraft or obia or whatever it is they do, go into the spirit. What power is that? And what, what are they capable of doing? When people come together in prayer, how much power do they have? If everybody asks for the same thing at the same time, what kind of power is being sent out to the universe? So it's interesting, you know, because a lot of us, we are quite powerful. We just don't know our power and we don't know where it comes from. But yeah, I just thought I'd run that by you guys. Um, probably a bit <clears throat> wishy-washy, but hopefully you can make some comment. Bye for now.